right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us on our fourth Tuesday of the month. As you know, our fourth Tuesday is our medical forum where we learn a little bit about our product, how it works, and then we go into detail about it. Last week, we had Maribel who did a fantastic job about I'm presenting the company, the opportunity presentation. And so we're just going to go and isolate um, one part of our business, uh, which is our products, our wonderful, wonderful products. And to host us this evening and to present to us will be our lovely CEO. Um, as you all know, um, David and I go back um, a long way. I've known David now for about 22 years. I first met him in 2009. Um, through another company. Um, I was working and consulting for his company. And nonetheless, David came from um, um, wellness products as well, supplements. So the supplement industry, he already um, uh, was involved with that, whether it was through the lawyer standpoint or from the CEO and president of other companies. Um, mm -hmm. But he has a wealth of knowledge in this industry. Um, and the industry, of course... Um, change when he went into network marketing, but the knowledge that he has and the knowledge that he has, how the body works and how it responds um, to certain supplements, um, vitamins, minerals, um, you name it. He has learned it. He has studied it and he has brought that to actives. Thus, the wonderful products that we have, which is scientifically backed um, by a lot of the research that he and his colleagues have done. So I will turn the time over to David um, to do our presentation. Thanks, Stu. Amen. Well, if some of you are wondering about uh, Stu's math, you're right. It wasn't 22 years. It's 12 years uh, from 2009. I saw Jerry. Jerry looks like he's not the kitchen there. But yeah. Stu often tells me that he's only known me for 12 years, but it seemed like 12 years. Um, and so uh, he's been talking to my wife, I think, about that. So uh, I know how that goes. But uh, it's great to be on with all of you tonight. Um, and uh, Stu is actually by the ocean. I've just got, you know, a surfboard and back to me to remind me of, uh, you know, I wish that I was the ocean uh, surfing tonight. But, and we usually do have a member of our advisory board for these meetings. Uh, we had a bit of a snafu. Uh, basically, uh, we got so caught up in preparing for the fourth anniversary Mexican um, meeting that we held over the weekend in Mexico City that, frankly, we forgot to reach out to one of our advisory board members uh, to fill in tonight. And on short notice, it was it was difficult. But nevertheless, um, I do play a doctor on TV. Um, I, I do have a JD after my name. I'm a Juris doctorate. I don't know if that accounts for anything. That actually probably wants makes people want to get off the line. But I want to, um, first of all, I want to share something um, and give you a little bit of a taste of uh, of the event, um, it's this, this fellow's name's uh, Marco Demaro. He he opened up. He's a famous uh, singer, and um, he joined the company by virtue of finding out about our product and the effect they've had upon his autistic nephew. And so uh, he he participates with us. If you're not on mute, you could put yourself on mute so that we could um, uh, so we're so no one's distracted. But uh, anyway, we had over a thousand people um, in Mexico City. Um, it was a great event and, um, and we look forward to hosting similar events in the near future um, here in the US. On that note, uh, we do still have, you still have time to qualify to come out to uh, be with us next weekend, the third and the fourth of December uh, for our A6 fly-in. Um, we're going to be spending the afternoon um, touring the um, manufacturing facility where our products are made in the U.S. And then uh, we'll have a dinner that night. And then the following day will be filled with, um, with meetings and, and training. <clears throat> and so um, if you feel like you're going to be able to get to A6, go ahead, make your reservations. We'll reimburse you for your expenses. Um, we, we have limited slots available for those people who, even if they don't hit A6, um, can, you know, if they want to come and, and fly out or, or drive out or whatever to be with us, uh, let us know and we can make uh, some accommodations for you as well. Uh, we think it's, it's going to be a great event. <clears throat> now, um, we, have, we have Aaron Cosmas to thank for um, the, the vast majority of what I want to talk about tonight. He, su he uh, submitted a, he's like, what did I ask? I don't even remember what I submitted. Well, uh, he he um, submitted a question that he originally aimed at Dr. Patel, 
But with, with Dr. Patel not being with us tonight, I, um, I took the um, opportunity to not only remind myself but about the science, but to dig a little deeper into the question about how each of the trifecta, genomics, optimum, and link, affect inflammation. And uh, so we're going to talk about that tonight. It really is amazing. In fact, I learned, I'm, I want to thank you, Aaron, because I learned some additional things while preparing for this meeting tonight that I, I hope you'll all find of interest. So to start with, um, you know, I really liked the, uh, when I was a kid, I liked going to Disneyland and going to the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. And, um, and as an adult, I enjoyed the movie Pirates of the Caribbean. And I'm going to share something because uh, it's going to become kind of a, um, a, a, uh, theme for tonight. Do you remember this part of the movie where the, the pirate Barbosa is talking to his, his prisoner, young Miss Turner, and he says, you best start believing in ghost stories, Miss Turner, you're in one. And um, so when we talk about inflammation, you better start believing in inflammation because you're living in it. We're all living in it and, uh, and we can't avoid it. And in fact, um, we're gonna talk a little bit about oxidative stress and inflammation. We're going to talk about the, how NERF2 affects inflammation. We're going to talk about how butyric acid affects inflammation. We're going to talk about um, uh, curcumin, tetrahydrocurcumin, how it affects inflammation. And we're also going to relate that to, uh, to Thanksgiving. How does that, you might say, how are you going to do all that? Well, we'll, we'll stay connected. Um, let's start with the Thanksgiving part. Um, you know, well, actually, let's back up one step. Um, you all heard about oxidative stress. And oxidative stress is the cumulative damage caused by free radicals. It's really, to put it, put it another way, it's the imbalance of, of, of free radicals and in our body. And, um, and now the tie-in to Thanksgiving is the fact that no matter how good the food is that you eat this Thanksgiving, and now no matter how healthy it is for you, um, it's going to cause a significant amount of oxidative stress because the body, um, the primary causes of oxidative stress are twofold. One, simply oxygen metabolism. In other words, uh, breathing air and utilizing oxygen. That's a big one. The other one is eating food and metabolizing food. Um, that's a, if you really think about it, the body has to convert these substances into a form that, they can, that it can use and then distribute throughout uh, throughout the body. And it's quite a chemical process that's, that's pretty involved and it causes a lot of stress. Now you might say you've heard of, you know, oxidate, the connection between oxidative stress and inflammation. You might want to say, you might want to ask, well, which came first? It's kind of like, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Um, does oxidative stress cause inflammation or does inflammation cause oxidative stress? The answer is yes. You might say, what do you mean? <laughs> well, first of all, oxidative stress does cause inflammation. It causes, and how does it do that? Well, just like when you are injured, if you cut your finger, get a sliver in it, or if you sprain your ankle, if you um, are overworking your muscle, if you're having any type of injury, <clears throat> that causes cellular damage, tissue damage, all of which then results in inflammation. And so the cellular level, when these free radicals are beating on your cells, they damage the cells and the response to damage in the body or any type of health insults or, or concerns is the body says, oh, I, I've got to turn the burners on. I've got to try and get rid of this by increasing the inflammation. So it creates an inflammatory response. <clears throat> now it turns into a vicious circle because the more that, that inflammatory response is on, guess what that does? That causes more oxidative stress and, and it in turn feeds upon each other. And so that in the case of, for example, uh, COVID-19 and other respiratory illnesses, then gives rise to what they call cytokine storms in which the respiratory cells of your lungs are so inflamed by this, by what the body thinks it's doing by, by helping us out by causing the inflammation to increase is actually causing great harm. And so let's start, let's start with genomics. So genomics actually cause, re reduces inflammation in two very interesting ways. <clears throat> the first way, <clears throat> excuse me, is a preventative one in terms of reducing the amount of oxidative stress by wiping out a considerable number of those free radicals. 
Now, you might remember from presentations that Dr. McCord and others have given. By the way, Dr. McCord wasn't at, was not at our event in Mexico City, but, but Dr. Brooks Hybertson, um, he had a family conflict. He was otherwise planning on attending, but he, he did submit a video um, um, in, uh, saying hello to everyone and, and uh, telling them how grateful they were for the progress that Actives is making in, in spreading the science of NERF2 and, and genomics. So anyway, going back to our production of, of um, free radicals, you know, someone was in, once, once estimated that we produce about 19 followed by 21 zeros worth of free radicals every day just through normal living, okay? That's, and that increases if we're sick, that increases if we are, are, are obese, that increases if we exercise a lot, it increases if we are if we smoke, if we drink, if we are um, if we are breathing polluted air. <clears throat> excuse me. All of those things then increase. <clears throat> excuse me. I think I'm having a little ox <clears throat> oxidative stress in my throat. Sorry about that. But uh, in any event, that that's a lot of free radicals rampaging through the body, just looking to cause damage, and they do. They these are unstable you know, reactive oxygen, oxygen species, and they're unstable. And just like we should avoid unstable people, we should avoid unstable um, electrons in our, in our, or free reactive species in our body, but we can't. And what they do is they look around, um, unlike some unstable people, these electrons, these molecules actually really want to become stable. And so they're looking to scavenge off an electron from something else, and they do it. But what they, but then what they become is is pretty is pretty damaging. They they become hydrogen peroxide, which um, is actually somewhat useful for for proper thyroid um, um, uh, function in our body. But it also uh, greatly contributes to the aging process. It's probably the primary uh, contributor to why our hair turns gray because it's literally dying the the, the hair as it as it leaves the the hair shaft in our body, and um, and then it also uh, produces superoxide and 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 other um, uh, cap and other um, damaging free radicals that are just bombarding our cells. And and so what happens is if we can reduce the overall number of, of free radicals, which is what happens by the by Nrf 2s um, induction of antioxidant enzymes like catalase and superoxide dismutase, then we can drastically reduce that level of, of oxidative stress. Now, that's one part of it. And so by so doing, it's NERF2 is, is working on something called the antioxidant um, response element, which is kind of cool. And that's, that's basically a nerve center in, all of our, in, in the nucleus of all of our cells. And so NERF2 gets in there, talks to these guys and says, okay, I'm gonna activate you. Okay, you are, you're the SWAT team. You need to be, you need to get going. I need your help. Let's uh, let's let's go take take care of these guys. It, it also um, it also activates something called the electrophile response element. Okay, um, that's also involved in antioxidant or cytoprotective measures. Cyto simply refers to cells, and so if it's cytoprotective, it means that it's protecting the cells from from these um, free radicals. That's one pathway it works. So it's a preventative one by reducing the overall number of bad guys in our system that can create havoc and, and create mischief in our body. And as we know, oxidative stress by itself is linked to over 200 diseases, including all of the major ones, okay? Now, how, do, how else does it work? Well, it works on another cytoprotective pathway in terms of it, it mediates, modulates, or accurately controls those genes whose job it is to ratchet up inflammation. Remember how we said oxidative stress causes inflammation and inflammation causes more oxidative stress? So you wanna have that proper balance. And so when there are things that are creating, that are putting your body out of balance when it comes to inflammation, like I said, it could be oxidative stress, it could be illness, it could be other things. You want to downregulate or if appropriate, or better, better term is to mediate, modulate, have that gene operate like it's supposed to. And, um, and therefore you get the proper um, immune system response, the proper um, inflammation response when you need it. Because there are times when 
when some inflammation is good. It's just that when that dimmer switch kind of gets stuck on a higher level than, it's, than it should, producing more, more chronic, you know, it's one thing to have acute inflammation when you have an injury. You can expect that and it's a way that the, that the body says, okay, slow down, don't use that muscle, you know, fix that bone, do whatever that, that, that's causing that acute inflammation. But when that turns into chronic inflammation, then that's not a good thing. And that's just going to, it's not healing. In fact, it's doing just the opposite of healing. It's causing damage, damage to those cells and is the primary cause of, seriously, those two, those two issues, oxidative stress and inflammation are the, the two main causes of everything that ails us, including aging. So if we can reduce that, guess what? We should. So that's, that's, that in a nutshell is nerve two. Now let's, let's proceed to link and butyric acid. Butyric acid is also um, involved in, in inflammation, but mostly from a preventative standpoint, okay? You know that, that our stomach, our gut, okay? Not just our stomach, but our entire gastrointestinal system is lined with, with what are sometimes called endothelial cells or colonocytes, but these cells that, that, that we otherwise know as, as the stomach lining. And they're really super important. They're really super important for a variety of reasons. One is you need to have proper permeability, meaning that there's, there's a certain, um, you want the, the turnstiles, you know, the admittance into the rest of the body, especially the, the small intestine and the duodenum where things are metabolized in the liver where things and the kidney where things are, are metabolized in our body. You want things to get there in, um, that should get there, like nutrients, but not just get there, they need to get there in the, in the proper size so that the body can utilize them. So this, this um, just think of, of the endothelial cells, our stomach lining, as being kind of a, um, uh, a matrix, if you will, that allows even naturally certain size particles to get through, okay? So the body can be nourished and have, have, have the things that it needs to, to grow and repair. Now, um, there's another side to that. Properly, a properly sealed or, or controlled um, stomach lining also keeps bad things out from getting into our system that are gonna wreak havoc. And how are they gonna wreak havoc? They're gonna cause inflammation uh, or, and or they're gonna cause replication of viruses and bacteria and other things in our body causing a lot of problems. So the stomach and the stomach acid where, where a lot of these things are, are entering into our bodies by virtue of things that we eat, the air, they end up in the stomach. And the stomach is, you know, it has a lot of acid in there and, and it can deal with a lot of bad guys entering the system. But if they get out, then they create havoc. And so, um, so butyric acid is that fuel that those cells like to eat so that, there any, that there's been any holes or damage or loosening up of those, of those connections between the cells, they can, they, can put them, they can make them strong again. And, um, and guess what? Um, just like inflammation, having, having damage to our stomach lining is inevitable. It's caused not just by oxidative stress, but actual stress. Okay, St emotional stress, mental stress, and physical stress. All of those things. Did you know that, you know, you've heard uh, Dr. Maroon talk about how our very thoughts can, can, can have an, imp an impact upon our health. They can, they have a genetic impact. Do you know that they've actually been able to do both brain scans as well as, um, uh, as measure and, and, and test stomach tissue of people when they've been very, very angry and or very, very stressed, guess what, they, guess what colors those, those go? Red, okay, red for inflammation. So when we're angry, when we are, um, when we have other, when we're not on an even keel for whatever reason, it, you know, that really does cause um, chemical um, uh, occurrences to, to occur and, um, and, and cause damage throughout our body. And so, so keeping those conjunctions tight is really important because once they open up, then they're not only letting in viruses, they're not only letting in bacteria, they're not only letting in pathogens into the system where the body has only one response, that's to ratchet up the immune system and ratchet up the inflammation, but it's also letting in food particles that would otherwise be nutritious and good for us in sizes that are too big. And that's what's been linked to, uh, to may, many allergies. And so if you can tighten up those connections and, and tighten up those endothelial cells, then 
then you're keeping the good guys in and, and, and getting them down to the right size so they can be absorbed. So the other thing that's really interesting about that is naturally speaking, because there's so much going on in the gut, the endothelial cells are programmed, if you will, to have a low level of inflammation. That they're, they're kind of designed that way. And that's great, unless they come under attack, which they do, and then guess what happens? That high level of inflammation occurs. Uh, the loosening occurs. They're not as effective as they are, as they otherwise would be. So, so butyric acid actually helps those endothelial cells stay at a low level of inflammation so they can operate correctly. And so it has that, that preventative effect from that standpoint. The other thing is that because so much of our immune system um, resides in the gut, when we have a healthy microbiome and a healthy gut, which butyric acid and the friendly, the friendly bacteria that help produce butyric acid and other short chain fatty acids, they, they drastically strengthen or mediate those genes, um, telling them basically everything's okay. You don't need to turn on the furnaces. You don't need to turn up the inflammation. We're good here. And, um, and, it, and so it, so it does, has a preventative effect and, and really kind of helps modulate those, that gene expression as well. Now, turning our attention to optimum and curcumin. Curcumin also, has a, also helps in, in two ways. Some of them are a little bit similar. They also have curcumin or tetrahydrocurcumin operates under some of the same pathways that NERF2 does. In fact, we know that curcumin is a, by itself, is a NERF2 activator. It's not a very strong NERF2 activator. Um, there are actually lots of individual um, substances that provide NERF2 activation. It's actually, you know, with genomics being the most powerful NERF2 activator that we know of so far, that by, um, by having that, that proper uh, synergy that occurs by those, those three ingredients in the proper ratio as designed and researched by Pathways Biosciences, you, you simply get a much higher level of NERF2 activation. Now why, now why is that important? Well, have you ever heard of uh, the phrase dose dependent? Dose dependent means a lot of things. Um, we know what the word dose is, right? It's how much of something we, we take. And we know the words, what the word dependent means, but dose dependent actually applies to a lot of things. So for example, um, people can talk about the role of, of uh, masks in preventing COVID-19, okay? And, and you can say, you can be on the side where masks help or masks don't help. Well, like everything else in life, it depends upon what you're talking about, okay? And I, and I had this brought forward to me when I was uh, talking to a former scientist. Uh, well, he's still a scientist, a scientist on our former company's um, board of, of scientific advisors. And, uh, and he said, David, here's the deal about masks. They don't stop everything. But if you can stop a certain percentage of those viruses, it's not just like we're being infected by one virus, okay? He says, if your body gets, infected, it gets, gets exposed to 100,000 viruses of COVID-19, it's going to be fine. You can take care of it. It can probably take care of a million. It can probably take care of 10 million. It's what, but it, he says in a sneeze or being around somebody, you might be, you might be exposed to 300 million. That's when you start talking about it, it, it might, it, there's a chance that if you're not doing some of the things that we do in, in terms of, of what the protective effects of our trifecta do, that your body is not going to be able to handle all that. So, so the, 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 contractability, your likelihood of contracting anything, COVID-19 or something else, is largely dose dependent. How much of that pathogen, how much of that virus, how much of that bacteria were you exposed to? We're going to come back to that in a second. But now going back to, to NERF2, they know that the, the amount that NERF2 helps to regulate though that oxidative stress is also dose dependent. The more NERF2, or put, put differently, the NERF2's availability to work with that antioxidant response element and the electrophile response element that I, that I mentioned before is not simply a matter of having lots of, not lots of NERF2 available. That's part of it, but it has to be available at the right time, okay? So when it needs it, it's there to draw upon and they can work together to signal to the body what it needs to do to, on the one hand, get rid of those free radicals, and on the other hand, downregulate 
those inflammatory cytokines, those inflammatory genes. So we know that, you know, going back to those of you that are familiar with ProTandem, the explanation that Dr. McCord has given me many times is that yes, um, ProTandem enabled NERF2 to get into that nucleus and start talking to that AAR, that antioxidant response um, uh, element. However, uh, about as soon as it says hello, it has to say goodbye because it got in there and it got out. And so the dose dependent part, being available when that element wants to use it, when that nucleus wants to use it, was greatly um, handicapped because they created a door and an, an opening and an exit at the same time. So why is genomics so much more superior? It opens up the door and, and, and ARE greets it, says, hello, why don't you stay a while? And guess what? Nerf 2 says, fine, I will. It takes its shoes off, puts its legs up on the couch and sits around and does whatever it needs to do with ARE in the nucleus of each and every cell. So it's available when it needs to be called upon to do these various things. So that's, that's really fascinating science. And I'm sure that if Dr. McCord is listening to me, he would cringe by how I just um, <laughs> talked about it. But I basically got it right. And at the end of the day, we simply want to make NERF2 available for as long as possible to be used at the levels and at the time it needs to by the nucleus of those cells. So now going back to curcumin, okay? It, has a, it does some of the same stuff. It does activate NERF2, but not to the same degree. It does activate antioxidant. Um, is actually curcumin is kind of interesting. It's number one. It's a it's an exogenous antioxidant, which means that we take it from outside. So it's like in that sense, it's like blueberries and other things. That yeah yeah they'll fight free radicals. But remember, um, and this is this is going to be homework. Okay, this we might actually give some bonus points for this. Okay, the reason that antioxidants that we take outside of our body blueberries and all these super juices and all these other things that say they have a huge amount of, of antioxidants they're providing that they're really high on the ORAC scale. It's bogus. Why is it bogus? I started the conversation tonight by saying, and that doesn't mean that they, that they aren't antioxidants, they really are. It just means that they, they won't make a difference. And the reason they won't make a difference is because how many free radicals do we produce? At least 19 followed by 21 zeros. How do, they, how do exogenous or antioxidants we take into our body through foods or drinks work? They work on, and this is the word, this is the key word for today. And I learned this from Dr. McCord, okay? They work on a stoichiometric basis. Stoichiometric is a very cool word. Um, and I try to use it as much as possible each and every day. I try to slip stoichiometric into some conversation. No, I'm just kidding. But stoichiometric means one-on-one. -on -one. They work on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Why we couldn't just say one-on-one -on -one basis and say stoichiometric, I don't know. Somebody got paid to come up with, the, with that word and probably got paid by the letter. I'm not sure. And he's probably great at Scrabble. That's a great Scrabble word, by the way. So in any event, okay, on a stoichiometric basis, that means that if um, one molecule of blueberries or one molecule of curcumin comes into contact with one free radical, guess what it's going to do? It's going to wipe it out. After all, it is anti. What's it anti to? It's anti to an oxidant, and that, which is an oxidant, which is a free radical. So it's going to wipe it out. But they're both going to be consumed in the process. And you simply can't eat 19 followed by 21 zeros worth of food that will provide that many antioxidants to go one on one with all those free radicals. It's impossible. You'll explode. Okay. Um, it's just, and, and it won't, you won't be a happy camper. So compare that to nerf 2s activation by, dip, by talking to its good friend, the antioxidant response element that says, hey, I've got some guys that work with me. One of them's called catalase. And what catalase does is one molecule of catalase will take out a million free radicals every second and not be consumed in the process. Does that sound like a better way to go? And, and, and nerf 2 says, yeah, yeah, that sounds like a lot better. Yeah, so forget the blueberry juice, forget all that. I mean, if you like it, drink it, but don't take it. But don't drink it because you think you're making a difference in oxidative stress because you, you're just not, okay? Um, but going back to curcumin, so the same thing. It's not only an antioxidant, but it also engenders and, and induces an antioxidant enzyme response. So it does help fight free radicals. Again, not as powerfully as NERF2 does. So as NERF2 in the formula of genomics does, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's good, but it's not, it's not great. Okay, so what is so great about curcumin, especially tetrahydrocurcumin? Well, we've been talking about these pathways and how it operates to avoid, uh, it's also cytoprotective. It protects the cells. 
but it uses a different pathways. It really is interesting. The more you, the more you find out about this, the more you, the more you not know why Dr. McCord and Dr. Hybrickson and others call their company Pathways Biosciences, because the body really does utilize different pathways, different genetic pathways to operate. In this case, tetrahydrocurcumin, the metabolite that comes from curcumin, in other words, uh, you know, let's say you start with turmeric, the body breaks it down to a phytonutrient called curcumin, and then it, it breaks it down even further into a metabolite called tetrahydrocurcumin. And that's the, that's the key metabolite that's been shown to have the, this influence upon the, perox, the peroxisome, I'm reading this now, because this is one thing I didn't know about. Peroxisome proliferator activated receptor activation. How's that? Okay, um, that is, or, or PP, PPARYA, okay, that's another genetic pathway that when upregulated, upregulated, it's really interesting. In most cases, uh, like NERF2, it downregulates certain genes associated that, that are cytokines. In this case, curcumin actually upregulates this guy, okay, and what it does, it says, okay, I got this. I'm going to go talk to my buddies, all of whom are inflammatory cytokines, and I will take care of downregulating them. So it's kind of a step removed, but it's a different pathway. And again, it's operating on cytokines or inflammatory genes that, if left unchecked, will make our lives miserable, and, and often do, and we don't even know why. And so the importance of all this is, as, as we are going back, you know, just living our lives and trying to be good, trying to exercise, trying to eat right, trying to stay as stress-free as possible, <laughs> trying to think as good of thoughts as possible, guess what? Life happens. You still gotta breathe, you still gotta eat, so you're gonna be subject, subjected to oxidative stress and inflammation. And the trifecta, really in an unparalleled fashion, work together to downregulate those cytokines, get rid of that, those free radicals, and so that your body, guess what? It's not aging as quickly. You really are turning back the clock. And what does that really mean? Well, it, doesn't, it certainly doesn't mean we're stopping time, but what it does mean is that cells that would otherwise age faster, what is, and what does really aging mean? It just means it's being damaged. Those cells, are, aging is just the way we measure cellular damage, right? So if you're reducing that cellular damage, if you can say, listen, you know, as a, 58 year old like I am, if I can reduce my cellular damage to that of someone much younger, I'm still 58, but my body, my cells will be operating at a level, um, hopefully, that's younger than my, than my years. And that's really what we're searching for because at the end of the day, I don't know if we can lengthen our time here upon this earth. I'm not sure about that. But what I think we can do is lengthen our health span. That whatever time we've got, we can be as healthy as possible. And, and, and we've got a lot of things um, stacked against us. We've got um, bad air, okay? We've got the need to exercise. We've got the fact that we don't always eat good food. We've got the, you know, addictive, addictive behaviors. We've got things that kind of, you know, sometimes we, we, we surely are our own worst enemy, but we are arming the world with high-tech weapons to put the body back in the place where it really should be, okay? And um, you know, one of our one of our distributors down in in uh, Mexico, and I've, you've heard us talk about this before, is Mama Coco, okay? Uh, that's featured in the Disney movie Coco, and she's now 108, okay? Now she wasn't there at the event, but the friend who introduced her was was, and she sought me out. And I actually had not remembered that she was a connection to Mama Coco. But she, she shows me a video of Mama Coco talking and talking about genomics. She calls it her medicine. Um, can you imagine 108 um, and, and still able? I mean, she needs help, don't get me wrong. And I'm not saying that all of us are going to be live to 108. But if we can all become the best version of ourselves as possible, that's really all, all that we're striving to do. Now, let's bring it a little bit closer to home, even. You know, the, the news is still out there regarding uh, COVID-19 outbreaks and numbers going up and all that type of stuff, despite the vaccines. And, um, and I'm, not going, I'm not here to take a stand on vaccines or no vaccines. What I am here to take a stand on is that whether it comes to COVID-19 or anything else, we should do everything that's within our power to help ourselves and our loved ones be as healthy as possible. 
And I don't care whether that's COVID-19 or something else. But in regards to COVID-19, we know that just like in regards to oxidative stress and inflammation, our trifecta is particularly situated to help us deal with that. Nerf 2 prevents the body's expression of one of the proteases, one of the proteins necessary for the virus to attach to our cells. Remember what I said about dose dependent, right? And how masks can prevent a certain amount. What if by taking Nerf 2 activator, what if by taking genomics, you've now reduced the dose again, and I guarantee you will. I'm not gonna make guarantees about whether someone is gonna become infected with COVID or whether they're gonna become sick from COVID. But what I can absolutely positively tell you is that when you take a Nerf 2 activator, the most potent Nerf 2 activator in the world, you are going to reduce the number of viruses that can attach themselves to your cell. And not just COVID-19 viruses, other respiratory illness viruses, because they operate in the same fashion. They attach themselves to the cell, themselves to the cell, by putting their little spike in the cell, but the spike won't fit. The spike can't permeate the cell unless this protease is expressed by the body. It's almost like the body is tricked into cooperating with this virus. It doesn't really want to. If it knew it was going to happen, it wouldn't, but it, but it does. So what Nerf 2 comes along and says, whoa, 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 we're not going to, we're not going to express that protease. And so the virus like keeps trying, keeps trying, can't attach. And since it can't attach, it therefore can't multiply. Can it, it can't inject its, its, its RNA into our cells and just go crazy, which is, and then overwhelm our defenses. But if it's just like that, guess what? The body's immune system says, hey, mister, you're not supposed to be here and can take it because uh, it, now it's in, a, it's in a level that it can, that it can deal with. Again, what about the gut? How does, how does uh, Link help in this whole thing? Well, if that virus is contained within the gut, can't get out because of proper, because of, of, um, proper permeability, not increased permeability, not increased holes, guess what? Much, much of that virus is gonna be destroyed in the gut. It's not even gonna get out into the system. And, and that immune system that resides in our gut is gonna be healthy. And when called upon, is gonna be able to have the proper immune response. By the same token, let's just assume that even though we've done all these things, nevertheless, the virus gets a toehold in our body. And the body says, hmm, I gotta, I gotta crank up the inflammation. There are studies out there that show that curcumin helps to prevent those cytokine storms, that, that, um, that unparalleled, and uncontrolled inflammation that the body turns on in response to COVID-19, causing the damage to the respiratory cells, causing uh, people to be unable to breathe and have to go on respirators and causing usually irreversible uh, scar damage, uh, scar tissue and, and damage to the cells, even if they do survive. So curcumin can help prevent those cytokine storms as does Nerf 2. It's like Nerf 2 says, whoa, whoa, whoa. We didn't really intend for this to happen. But if the inflammation's out there, we're gonna help downregulate it. So again, these high-tech weapons in your arsenal to provide protective armor, as well as, as very effective weapons to go out and, and address these particular health insults. Now I mentioned, you know, Thanksgiving's coming up and we're going to subject ourselves to a lot of oxidative stress and therefore more, more inflammation um, by everything that we eat. So be careful out there, have fun. I know um, I, I'm one of the ones that's, I'll just admit, I'm a terrible hypocrite when it comes to that. I love Thanksgiving and I love pie. Okay, pie is like my dirty secret. I love pie. And, and um, my wife would tell you that last, last, week, last Thanksgiving, I actually um, took it to an entirely new level. Um, Time and Marshall, who's our, who's our general counsel, was also at Thanksgiving with us with, with his family. I remember he looked at the plate of pie that I had. He said, David, seriously, you're gonna eat all that? And I said, absolutely. Now, even by my standards, I put away a lot of pie last year. So I learned my lesson, all right? And I caused myself a lot of oxidative stress. So let's, let's talk about arrow. How can arrow help us out with all that? Remember that arrow can help us burn calories faster because it's actually increasing the number of mitochondria in our cells, those little furnaces that, that burn calories and, and that we need to get going, okay? It can actually help create a feeling of satiation. So well before my 10th or 12th piece of pie, no, I'm just kidding, it wasn't quite that right. But well before my, I go over the limit, it's gonna help me feel satiated. It's gonna help 
tell my brain, stop, stop. Now that necessarily, just because my brain tells me I'm full, doesn't necessarily mean that I will stop, but, but it will give me, it'll be, it'll be holding up stop signs to my brain saying, you're done, you're done, you don't need to eat anymore. And, and then finally, it's gonna control the, the blood sugar regulation that we, that we have that's gonna give us those spikes, okay? So guess what? Even after we're done eating and we're in our turkey tryptophan-induced coma, watch, trying to watch football after this, guess what? You're still gonna be breathing. You're still gonna be creating oxidative stress just by breathing, even if you're asleep. So don't forget to take your genomics. Don't forget to take link. Oh, by the way, let's talk about link, okay? We're gonna be introducing, usually we overdo it, and that, that taxes our, our digestive system. Butyric acid to the rescue. You need to have that digestive system running smoothly. Now, some of you who are just starting may have said, oh, wow, yeah, I took it, and my digestive system didn't seem to like it. Now, that's because your digestive system was out of whack to begin with. As Dr. Earl has talked about before, that, that, that type of detoxing uh, that occurs in, in, in actually many people, and even the change of bathroom habits and things like that, is simply the body's attempt saying, oh, great, finally, finally, you're giving me something I can deal with, okay? And, and, it's, and now it's struggling to go back into homeostasis because your gut didn't get out of whack overnight and it's not gonna get back in. We say out of whack, do we say back into whack? Do we say that, Aaron? I don't know if we say back into whack, but okay, back, it's not gonna get normal again simply overnight, but it's gonna give the fuel that those cells want to say, finally, I can create the microbiome, this perfect environment that I need to, in order to have the digestive system. Um, operate properly. So you're going to, by, by, by taking link, and I would actually even, you know, over the holidays, make, make doubly sure. And if you need to double up your dose, do it. You're not going to hurt yourself by doing so. But if you do it, you're going to avoid the brain fog that comes from often overeating and, and just way too many carbs. Um, and you're going to also get that digestive system operating like it should. So that's, those are the things I wanted to cover tonight. Um, some of you know that I call myself a recovering lawyer. When you, hear, when you hear me talking like this, going so fast, covering a lot of stuff, not even taking a breath, you're saying, dude, you're not recovered yet. You're still too much, way too much of a lawyer. So I apologize for that. I take the Tribecta. It's good for oxidative stress. It's good for inflammation. Okay, it's good to help me uh, stay healthy from COVID and other respiratory challenges and insults. And it actually helps me become more and more less of a lawyer. So um, if that's a problem for you too, I highly recommend it. So I'm going to... Um, uh, we still have a few minutes. I want to be I want to be cognizant of the time. Um, that's in other words, uh, stoichiometric to be cognizant. You've got to use both those words in your uh, in your sentences this upcoming week um, amongst all your friends. And and by the way, um, all of them are going to be dealing with exactly the same challenges as Thanksgiving that you are. And so it might be a, a great opening to talk about the company and say, you know, one thing I like about Link is that I can eat this stuff and it's going to help get my you know, it's going to help me with, you know, digest it better or whatever it is. But uh, I think there's lots of things to talk about when you're together with families and friends. And, and don't worry, I'm not saying be that person when they, when you're together with family says, oh, here comes Aaron, he's going to talk to me about an MLM again, or here comes this, this nose, you know, as opposed to, wow, you know what, Aaron's always got some really cool stuff to talk about. I can't wait. And I know that's, that's how you guys will be. So anyway, I've got time for a few questions. If, uh, if you've got some questions out there. Um, let's, let's, let's see if we can answer. Let's see, let me see on the, okay. Aaron just, I'm looking at the chat now. How many pieces of pie did, did David eat? Um, you know what, I'm embarrassed to admit how many. So that, that will remain between me, my wife and, and, um, and Simon Marshall, who's also an attorney. So he has attorney client privilege. He can't, he can't release my secret either. So any, any questions, anything you want to talk about? I have a question. Okay. So my name's Anissa and I just started taking the products like three days ago. Coco's online. She's the one that uh, introduced me to them. My question would be, I'm quite healthy and I'm not used to ever feeling sick. I, I keep my body in an alkaline state on a very, on a daily basis. I just started ingesting these and both times I felt nauseous. Like when you take a vitamin sometimes, mm -hmm. You don't have food in your stomach. Both times I felt nauseous when taking them. Um, the, the, the three when things. Say, when you say them and you show, you're talking about, okay, so the trifecta all at the same time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So and then sure. I think I figured out today with her, she said, take, take this one in the morning and these two at night. 
you know, not everyone's the same. And so I'm, I'm fine with that. Dr. McCord sometimes would say, maybe try a little fat when you're taking uh, products like this. Um, I will say that, um, especially in regards to link and the butyric acid, your experience in feeling a little nause nauseated or um, a, a little, you know, not, not yourself is actually fairly common. And, and many people that last um, um, two or three, sometimes four days. Um, I wouldn't say it's, I wouldn't say it happens to everyone, but almost everyone notices something for the first two days. And, and again, uh, because it is gut related, the something that they notice is not always pleasant, but I can tell you that in every case, um, now sometimes I've, I've also advised people maybe back off a dose, I mean, um, an amount, take half a capsule or something like that, just to see how your body does, because we don't want people to be miserable. Um, but um, I will say that um, I don't think I've ever encountered anyone who just says, I've, I've never been even, I mean, in fact, what's interesting is that in a very small percentage of people, the, that butyric acid actually causes a little bit more binding um, as opposed to um, a looseness of stools and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, actually, almost the exact opposite that you'd expect. So they have to increase their fiber and things like that. But, um, in, and I won't name any names, but I know some pretty well who have told me this story. They say, but it's totally worth it to us because even though maybe it's caused a little bit more of that effect, um, the brain fog is diminished. My overall digestion is still better. I'm not having the, you know, the, the discomfort, gas, bloating, whatever associated with it. And so um, uh, I, would, I would simply encourage you to, to experiment until you find what's, what's good for your body. And that was going to be my next question because we're all, all bodies are different, sure. right? And the amount of, I'll call it stress, the, the 19 plus 21 zeros behind it. Yeah. I go to the gym almost every day. So mine's who knows what it more. is. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot more, like you said, how do, this is the how question. How do we know what's right? Cause this is just a general prescription for all. Well, that's interesting. Um, I think at the end of the day, um, it's very much like um, you look like, again, you look like you're fit. You look like you lift a lot and things like that. You know, not all, um, not all exercises, not all um, uh, things that people do, uh, not all routines yield the same results for all body types, right? They have to right. they, they pay attention. What, what is good for me here? What is good for me there? And, um, and you can learn from others. So I can say, yes, that those formulated, that those formulations were formulated with the masses in mind, okay? That based upon the studies, this is the amount that's been shown to be effective. But I can tell you that um, I don't always stick with them every day to the, to the dose um, uh, I experiment. I pay attention to my body. Um, I take more Optimen, for example, especially after working out um, than, uh, than, than the one in the morning and the one at night. One in the morning, one at night for Optimen is really designed more to control chronic low-grade inflammation, um, for which it's very good. But if you're dealing with something a little bit more severe, um, like you know, just just soreness that arises naturally um, from producing lactic acid, a strain doing whatever it is, you're going to, you know, you can take more and there's, and there's not, you don't have to worry about a, um, uh, an overdose or anything like that. Um, okay. And so the same thing with butyric acid, um, uh, particularly if I'm, if I'm in an environment where I'm not eating very well, I'll increase the amount of of um, butyric acid. And if I'm, a, and if, I'm, if I'm in another challenged environment, like I'm on airplanes, well, not on airlines as much as I used to be, but still quite a bit, I will even increase my amount of, of genomics. Um, I remember when I first talked to Dr. McCord, uh, as, we were, as we were preparing to start this company, um, I met him in West Palm Beach and he was now, you know, he was at, uh, at Pathways Biosciences and he, and he still, he said to me, David, um, he used to make, when I was a CEO of Life Advantage, he always used to kind of chide me a little bit saying, you're taking way too much protein. Cause I used to tell him I take two in the morning and two at night. He said, you don't need to take that, take that much. And, um, and uh, he says, you just, you know, one a day is fine. So when we met together, you know, five years ago now, um, he said, well, David, it turns out that accidentally you were probably right. <laughs> because, <laughs> uh, and it truly was accidental um, because he, that's when, you know, earlier in my presentation that I explained how pro tandem they discovered created an entry into the cell, but at the same time created an exit. So the effect was very, is very small. And uh, as opposed to genomics, they create an entry without an exit. So it's able to last longer and therefore be more potent. 
Um, and so he says, yeah, by taking more, you are allowing Nerf 2 to act to take more time in your body. Um, now, again, that was purely accidental. Well, kind of, I was paying attention to my body. How did I feel when I, on, on one versus two versus, you know, whatever. Okay. And so I was, you know, by virtue of being a, uh, I'm a are you a trainer, Anisa? No, I do. I, I'm in business. I simply work out for, for health. So I do a lot of yoga. It looks like I do a lot of lifting. I do mostly yoga though. Well, there you go. I but just I mean, have a lot of muscle left because I lifted for a very long time. Very long. <laughs> well, time. But, you, but, but even that tells me, answers the question I was about to say. You, by virtue of, you, you can tell the difference in your body by what, when you were lifting a lot versus doing yoga a lot, mm -hmm. right? So you yeah. pay attention. You pay attention to things that you do, things you pay. And, and so I would simply advise you and everyone on this call, really, um, pay attention to how you feel. And, um, and you'll be surprised that you can zero in on that dosing even better. Thank you. Okay, welcome. Any other, any other uh, questions out there? We've got time for one more. Hi, David. This is Deborah in uh, Spokane, Washington. Hi, Deborah. Um, I started on the project a couple of weeks ago, and uh, my sister is constipated, and I'm irregular. I've had diarrhea since I had uh, surgery in 2014. So anyway, I'm getting really good results. I love the product. I noticed for me, though, I was taking three of the link a day, and I was going the opposite. So I just cut down on one. I'm going to try two a day. And then my sister started on it a couple of weeks ago, but she started out kind of getting the looser bowels, but now she's kind of stable. So I thank you for your help on this. I just told her maybe to go one more a day on the link and that could possibly set her up to start having a regular bowel because she's very constipated. She's chronically constipated. Yeah. So I wanted to share that with you. I think I understand that you just kind of go by with your body yeah, and how it works exactly. and and the nerf too, though, I'm not really sure I'm understanding when to up that if I have to, if maybe when I'm a lot more stressed or, well, or how does that apply? Me, again, there, it's not that scientific in regards to increasing the dosing on nerf too. Um, okay. when, I know, when I know I'm gonna be in a, in a really challenged environment for a sustained period of time, like, like on a flight, okay? I was just on a flight to Mexico City for four okay, hours. Okay, I got you. Recycled air, all that kind of stuff. Then I'm like, yeah, I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna increase it. Um, and so, and, and, and <laughs> with that said, um, in regards to that, Nerf 2, I would not say, and, and if Dr. McCorder on the, uh, were on the call right now, he'd probably say, David, there's nothing scientific about what you're doing. And he would be right. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not basing it upon independent studies. I'm just basing it upon how I feel. And if I'm, then the good news is, um, whatever yes. I don't need, the body's just not gonna use, okay? And, and I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about, you okay. know, too much nerve two into me or anything like that. But what you explained, Deborah, about you and your sister is really quite common, and especially in regards to link, um, and especially as you're first using it, those experiences are quite common. And by the way, chronic constipation is very common, especially in women. It's, it's, it's the reason that fiber is always and has been for decades the number one product sold at drugstores, always has been. And um, and so it's, it's a chronic problem. And so okay. people can get... <clears throat> Their systems operating correctly, it makes a big difference. May I ask a question? Or I don't know if this supports Deborah. Okay, thank what you. What I do know is I take magnesium at nighttime. I take two magnesium pills at nighttime, and it's very good. And it tends to wake you up in a very subtle way uh, for a bowel movement and stuff. So if she's not doing any, I don't know what. Again, I just started these, but I do know I take magnesium on a regular basis, and if I need it, and that will be something possibly to support her sister. And see yeah, if you, great. if you, um, uh, well, the, I, you're the CEO, right? Not the doctor. You're the lawyer that we need to confirm that with the doc, with the doctor. Yeah. I, again, I, I know quite a bit about health though. So that's okay. why I, can Sorry, I thought my thing was on. Absolutely. No, magnesium is not contraindicated. Um, we've talked about, we've actually addressed this. Uh, that's a good point. And, um, and, and, and on that point, uh, as great as, a, and I'll just end on this. I think it's a, it's a very good point to end on. Um, our products are amazing, and um, but they're not the only things that we, use, we should do, okay? Um, and in fact, the other thing about our products, except, with the exception of Aero, which does have some nutrients, they are actually not nutritional in the sense of having nutrients. They're very helpful for the cells, but nutrients, the vitamins, minerals, micronutrients, proper diet are so important 
Um, you can do all these other things, but you know, it kind of reminds me, remember when um, Bill Clinton was president, you know, they show him going out for a jog, which is good. And then he'd end his jog at McDonald's, you know, eating fries. I'm like, dude, you just, uh, you just undid all the good that you just did <laughs> jogging. And, uh, and I, I realized why he was just kind of trying to be every man, but we do, we all, we sabotage our health a lot um, by undoing the, the good effects of what we are doing by some of the habits that we, that we have formed, especially in regards to food. So I welcome that, Anisha, and, and, and those type of things are very important for us to, to remember. And just remember, there's so much, the reason we chose the name Actives for the company, and I, I think that I can't overemphasize this, is because we realize how much there is in our lives we can control and we can activate and we become, um, we become really the mechanism for doing that. Um, we closed the meeting in Mexico City um, and I was talking and of course the whole the entire affair was in Spanish and, um, and I don't speak Spanish um, but there were enough things that I understood that I could make this point the word I word you know I, I, I understood the word epigenetica epigenet epigenetics okay I understood the word testimonials which is testimonials I understood the word dinero we all know dinero right money um, these are th these are words that were coming out in the various presentations I understood the word familia which is family and um, and, and they often use the word gracias to give thanks to other people they 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 said dios god they, they invoke god and, and the blessings that they're getting in their lives but the one thing that I thought was very interesting was the word aquí which means here and I said that's a very important word because all of those other words that you heard, all those things about being a family, all those things about epigenetic products, all those things about making money, all those things about working together with friends, it's all here. And we don't have everything that you need in your life, okay? We don't take the place, but we, but we provide a lot and we will make you healthy and help and, 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 and align yourselves with others who are like-minded, who are friends, and help you reach out to you and your loved ones to provide the best life that you can. And that's all that we can ever ask. So thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, it's great to be on here. Uh, Vita, I'm sorry that I went so long, um, but Goko um, Sama uh, Desktop. And uh, thank you for, for, for being with us. Or I should say, Oskari Sama Desktop. That means I know that you are very tired. Um, and so uh, <laughs> thanks for being with us tonight. Um, Angie, are you still on? 